Good morning on this wet and dreary Wednesday. Tiffany and I have been talking a lot about some of the information that we had wish we knew before we really started getting into the meat of converting the school bus. What we're trying to do is make videos basically for our past selves, for people that could potentially be in the same position that we were in not that long ago. Um, so we're, we're trying to be a resource in that way. And uh, we were thinking about some videos that we could potentially make. And uh, one of the things that came up was, you know, what are some of the things that we wish we knew or at least be aware of uh, before converting your schoolie. So if you're anything like us, uh, these things will probably happen for you, um, and that's okay. Uh, but we've come up with 15 things that we wish we had known before we started building the schoolie. So without further ado, here they are. Number one, you'll get overwhelmed. Guaranteed, it's just going to happen. Even just looking for a bus to buy, whether it's from a dealer or from an auction or anything along those lines, you're, you're gonna get overwhelmed. Uh, but knowing that honestly kind of helps. When you feel that happening, you're like, you know what, it's okay, we'll get past it. Uh, especially if you're like us and you don't really have any experience doing this kind of thing, whether it's buying the bus or construction or making some sometimes complex decisions, uh, you know, so uh, we got overwhelmed a lot and still are. We're maybe three-fourths of the way through the build and we still get overwhelmed, but we've learned how to adapt to that. And we've started to recognize the signs of becoming overwhelmed and sort of pulling back a little bit before it becomes too much and we have to move away or, or, or step away from it for too long. Uh, so knowing that moving forward is definitely helpful. Number two, you'll be spending way more on screws and nails and small pieces of hardware and wood and materials than you really thought that you probably would. Uh, that has certainly happened with us. I've developed a hatred for buying screws because what, what happened to us initially, we weren't very organized and we would buy screws and have them laying around everywhere all over the garage and stuff. Uh, and then we couldn't find them when we needed them, then we'd go out and buy more and then find the old ones later. And fortunately, we've pretty much used all of them up to this point. So uh, the ones that we've lost and found, we've still been able to use. So we're not just throwing away money, but I hate buying screws. I, I just can't stand it anymore. <laughs> Number three, you will watch countless hours of YouTube videos. Just like this one. It's definitely happened with us uh, when whenever we get lost or uh, start thinking about how some large project is going to go, we, we go to YouTube immediately. We're, we're definitely students of YouTube University, and it's paid off for us pretty well. YouTube's a great asset, and the fact that there are so many people out there that are willing to share their processes and share their knowledge and information and experiences, that is huge. So definitely take advantage of that, but just know that you'll be going back to YouTube pretty frequently. Number four, it'll probably take longer than you imagine. It has taken us a lot longer. Now, of course, everybody's circumstances are completely different. Some people uh, may have the ability to do nothing else except the build, and then they're gonna be done a lot faster. We had to continue working, and we would run out of money, run out of, honestly, motivation. You know, we would get, like, we would get overwhelmed, and we'd have to stop and move away just for the sake of our own sanity. And that pushed the build back a little bit. And so it is going to take a little, around two years what we wanted to have done in one year uh, or less. So, but that's okay too, things happen. But knowing that if you're, if you're planning some time to build out a schoolie, uh, probably better to plan for just a little bit more time. Number five, uh, this is a hard one for me, uh, <laughs> which sounds terrible. You have to think for yourself. Uh, there are a billion ways to solve one problem. And when you, you know, you, if you ask for advice or if you ask people about their opinions on how to solve a particular problem, you'll get probably five different answers. And the, the right answer is the one that works for you, not the one that works for someone else. If somebody is suggesting something that doesn't make sense to you or you don't have the experience for, it's okay not to take that advice. It's okay to do the thing that you feel like is right and is gonna work for your needs specifically because your needs are different from anybody else's needs, guaranteed. Uh, that's been tough for me. If, if I get, uh, somebody tells me that, oh, you're doing something wrong, I like, I, I do soul searching. I'm like, oh my gosh, 
am I doing it wrong? Is this terrible? Should I do it their way? And then I realized that, you know what? They may have good advice, but ultimately what matters is my own decision and the decision that works for me and for our purposes. So uh, keeping that in mind and not getting too distracted, I mean, definitely ask for advice, definitely listen to people, but it, the buck stops with you and so you have to make that call. Number six, you'll definitely be going to the hardware store like six billion times on days where we're working on the bus all day long. I almost guaranteed go to Lowe's three different times. That's for a variety of reasons. It's either buying more screws or going and uh, getting a fitting or an adapter that I had bought previously but was incorrect. And so I gotta return that, go back and get the right one, come back and maybe do that a couple more times. <laughs> So it's just part of it. Uh, so yeah, you'll be you'll you'll we know the people there. Like we know the checkout people at Lowe's, and we've gotten really familiar with them. So which is good. I mean, it's just a thing, though. It's you have to you have to sort of understand going into it that you'll be you'll be at the supply places pretty often. Number seven, uh, you're gonna want to spend a lot of time working on the bus. Once you get in the bus and start making some progress and start to see things, you know, coming into form. Uh, it's really, it's really exciting. Uh, I read a book recently about motivation and, uh, in the book it said that you don't need motivation to get started. You just need to get started. And then motivation comes after small victories. And that's, you know, a hundred percent true. Like every little thing in the bus that we're doing, every little finished surface or every large no noticeable difference or even small noticeable differences they they make you want to keep going and they make you want to spend more time and do more for the bus which is fantastic but it's also sort of difficult when you have to do other things when you have to work and you have to have a work life balance and and uh, take care of chores and other things you want to be working in the bus all the time uh, so <laughs> prepping for that is is nice number 8 you'll build some incredible skills uh, you know, coming into this, we didn't have any knowledge when it comes to woodworking or, I mean, honestly, and, and we, <laughs> we knew so little, like we, we had no concept of how to make cabinets, how to make a table, how to finish things, how to, uh, you know, make any sort of meaningful measurement and make two pieces fit together. I mean, that's just, we didn't do that kind of stuff growing up. We didn't, uh, we don't have that experience, but Doing this, I mean, half the reason why we wanted to do this ourselves is to build that experience. And <laughs> we're certain we're far from masters of any particular trade involved in this. But man, we know 100% more than we did coming into it. And that's valuable. Even if you sit on the sidelines, watch someone else, you'll be you'll be learning and you'll be able to uh, understand how things fit together more after you're done with it than certainly when you first started. Number nine, going hand in hand with eight, you'll become more self-reliant, honestly. So when, when you build out your bus and you're putting things together, if you do the plumbing yourself, if you uh, build the cabinets, if you build uh, tables, things like that, something happens to them, something breaks, or you wanna add something later, you don't necessarily have to ask someone to help you, depending on the project. You might be able to do it all yourself. Uh, whereas before you may not have been able to do that. So building the school yourself and even especially if you don't have any experience means that you can redo it again later and you have that knowledge and you have that ability instead of having to ask a friend or pay someone to do it for you. Number 10, you'll meet new people. Uh, we've had so many people just walk by the bus and want to talk to us. They want to know what we're doing. They want to know and, and tell us how interested they are and how they wish they had done something similar to that when they were our age. Uh, it's nice, we've been able to have conversations with people and meet people that we would not have had those conversations with before. Uh, and hearing their experiences and hearing their recommendations, like, oh, this is great, but you know, it would be really cool if you did something like that, that we would have never thought of. Uh, so, you know, doing the build yourself and getting that kind of feedback is, is very cool and you make some connections that way. Number 11, you will overcome some seriously difficult mental and physical obstacles. Again, you know, coming from, you know, very little experience in terms of woodworking or, or building furniture, um, <laughs> we, we ran into a lot of, and are running into uh, a lot of times where we're, we don't know how to proceed. We don't know how to make a decision that is the correct decision that will work for us and that also looks good and fits in with everything else. But when you do make those decisions and you do go past whatever thing was blocking your way, God, it feels good. 
uh, overcoming that is, is wonderful. It's a great feeling. Number 12, you might want the build to be done with ASAP. You know, you may want to be completely finished with it and get on the road as soon as possible. And, that, and that's been us to a certain degree. Um, but, you know, Tiffany had a great point the other day that, you know, this process, it's taken a, a year and a half at this point. It's a significant time in our lives. It's something that, you know, we'll look back on and we'll remember building this. We'll remember learning the things that we learned in order to make this happen. And all of the struggles and all of the frustration, but also all of the triumphs and the achievements and the small little victories, uh, those, are, those are important. And it's, uh, I think it's a good idea to appreciate that and be in the moment and not just want it to be over with because you'll likely reflect fondly on it later. So enjoy it, enjoy the build, enjoy the frustration, enjoy the achievements. Number 13, you're gonna learn some new things about yourself and if you're building it with your significant other, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff about your significant other too. Uh, Tiffany and I, <laughs> Tiffany and I have learned a lot about each other, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, we've been married for, I guess, six years and we were, we've been dating since middle school, so we felt like we knew each other coming into this pretty well but as soon as we started doing this build and we started solving problems together we we would both be working on one solution and oh my gosh we have totally different ways of solving the same problem and and we've even found that describing our solutions to one another can be really difficult it's we just we have very different ways of thinking about uh, problem solving, uh, and that's fine. We've we know that now. Uh, before it led to some conflict. Before it would be frustrating because uh, I wouldn't be able to communicate to her my ideas, and sometimes she wouldn't be able to communicate to me her ideas, and that can lead to a lot of conflict. Um, but we've figured that out, and so now we still work together on a lot of projects, but we have taken more of an individualized approach to different things. So. Tiffany will have a certain project that she's working on, and I'll be working on a different project in the bus same day. Things tend to happen faster, uh, we get uh, finished sooner, and uh, there's less conflict. And Because really, you know, we don't have to ask the other person every two seconds, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, there's, there's definitely the risk, and we run into it all the time, of paralysis by analysis. And you think of how many billions of ways this one thing could, could work, and after a while you can't decide and nothing happens uh, and we found that that would happen more often when we would work together on the same project but by working on separate projects and still communicating but different projects we we don't run into that as often and things get done faster and in a much more um, sort of enjoyable and smooth <laughs> more smoothly uh, than if we were working on it together number 14 uh, you'll be proud of every little thing that happens, especially again, if you're if you are like us and are coming from a point of almost zero knowledge when it comes to this kind of, of work, uh, then you're going to be really proud of every little thing that you get done, every noticeable, uh, you know, I mean, even just in the very beginning, getting the first seat out, getting a row of seats out, you know, painting the floor, getting the rust done, each little thing builds on the next, and. Uh, it's, it makes it more fun, and you know that motivation comes from those little small steps, those small victories. You get one small victory, and then you want that next victory, and so on and so forth. And then after a while, you look back to where you came from, and holy cow, you've come a long way. It, it doesn't even have to be good. Like, so many of the things in here are just, I mean, any, any carpenter would come in and just shake their head and walk out and cry a little bit because there's not a straight line in here. There's nothing tees up. There's no, nothing's plumb, but it works. And uh, we did it and we're proud of that. And so there's something wonderful about that. Lastly, number 15, and possibly the most important part of this little series is that you will find yourself in a community of extraordinarily kind, interesting and helpful people. Uh, we've been really impressed with the willingness of others in this community that are doing the same thing in the van life community too, uh, that they're willing to provide knowledge, they're willing to provide advice. Um, there's, you know, you can, it feels like there's always someone there that you can ask a question to and they'll be there to answer or at least provide some sort of moral support or whatever it may be. 
But that's really valuable, because this can be a really scary thing, depending on your circumstances, depending on if you're leaving everything, if you're doing this alone. Uh, if We've talked to a few people recently that are doing this, or that are thinking about coming from the UK over to the States. I mean, I, I can't imagine what that would be like on my end uh, if I was thinking through that process. That's terrifying. But knowing that there are people around that are willing to listen and willing to provide support and because we're all sort of in this thing together um it's a it's a great thing it's a good good feeling so uh being in that kind of community is fantastic so those are 15 things that we wish we knew when we started our build uh certainly the fact that we didn't know them didn't hurt us really but uh it's good to know and so you know things things to expect things to look out for uh while you're uh just beginning to build uh, hopefully you can find this helpful for those of you that are just starting to build out. Um, again, you know, a lot of these things will be mitigated by different people's experiences. If you already have a lot of woodworking skills or you've done something like even somewhat similarly to this before, you're going to uh, have a lot easier time than we did. But there are a lot of people out there that are looking to make a build like this that, uh, that have no experience, and that was us. So this video is for you guys. Uh, we really appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video and our others, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. We love to read your comments, so please do leave one at the bottom. We also wanted to mention that we're going to be part of the Colorado Tiny House Festival. Uh, we'll be there exhibiting our build and uh, hopefully getting a few things finished uh, before that. Uh, but that's on June 22nd in Brighton, Colorado. So if you're in the area, you guys come out and see the other uh, builders, the other DIY builders. Uh, the other tiny homes out there. It's going to be really, really cool, and we're super pumped to be a part of it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you out there.